Okay, let's start. It's 11.03. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Connected Insights uh, Web Summit. Uh, today's talk is hosted by Enrique, who's, who's our speaker uh, this morning's talk. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of uh, a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in that it doesn't use the traditional model uh, for connecting clients with uh, consultants. Right? So in a traditional consulting firm, a client would come to a partner in a consulting firm, the partner would take on the project and they have full-time consultants who go and deliver the project. What we do is uh, uh, our uh, you know, partners, they connect with the client and to connect them with a consultant, they use consultants from small consulting firms. Um, it's a much more efficient model in our view, which is why we're uh, putting all our uh, efforts and money in uh, life behind it. Um, this summit is something that we have set up in uh, collaboration with about 70 of the boutique consulting firms in our ecosystem. So we have about 350 boutique consulting firms. So with about 70 of them, uh, we've collaborated to put together this, uh, uh, this summit. Uh, it's called Connected Insights. Uh, this is the second such program that we're starting after COVID. Uh, 2020 was supposed to be a great year, right? It was supposed to be the year where, uh, year where everyone was going to change it all. Everyone was going to uh, change the world. It was the turn of a decade. Uh, you know, everyone was really excited about it. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way. We suffered a lot in our organization as well, like a lot of other consulting firms and others. Uh, but what we decided to do um, in 2020 uh, to start with is... Um, take 20% of the time that we have in our organization. So each person for one day a week would spend time uh, on initiatives like uh, some of you might have heard of the Superheroes Project, uh, where we got about 700 business leaders from across the, uh, across the GCC to help small businesses uh, uh, you know, get back on track. Uh, 2021, we started the Connected Insights Initiative, where we are trying to get businesses again, to get back on track, but in a different way. The Superheroes Project was about advice from mentors to small businesses. Uh, connected Insights is sharing of insights and expertise by uh, thought leaders with uh, businesses across the GCC. Um, and uh, we're really, really excited to seeing you all. So a couple of quick housekeeping matters. Of course, we're making you all panelists, right? So that you can interact, you can switch on your videos, you can ask questions uh, by speaking, not just by using the chat, but feel free to use the chat while the speaker is speaking. Um, a couple of other quick things. One is we're gonna be giving giveaways or we're gonna be handing out giveaways during, the, uh, during this uh, one hour. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll invite you to be a part of the Superheroes Project. Uh, so that's the first thing. And I'll keep sending the links on chat so that I don't disrupt uh, Enrique's talk. Um, the next thing that we'll be doing is uh, we're, we're doing about six, um, we're doing six workshops from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Dubai time every day uh, during the next uh, seven days. Uh, these are, of course, paid invite-only workshops because they're longer workshops, unlike this webinar. So uh, but what we'd like to do is for three people who are attending this talk, we'd like to give uh, you a complimentary invite. So all you need to do is fill up this form. Um, and the third giveaway is we're going to invite because there's some really bright people uh, on this call who are attending to listen. But we'd also like you to speak and be a speaker at our next Connected Insights Web Summit. So we're going to be sending this on the chat. And then towards the end of the call, we're going to do a group photo. So, you know, I'll ask you to uh, comb your hair, brush your hair, whatever, look a little bit good for that quick photo opportunity towards the end of the event. Um, so that's it from me. Uh, I'm uh, around and I'll be chatting with you on the chat uh, while Enrique is presenting. So thanks a lot. Uh, Enrique, uh, over to you for your introduction and then your webinar. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Baron. Um, thank you for, for the invite, for the opportunity. It's, it's always good to have a, you know, interaction with, with what's happening in our ecosystem in this part of the world. 
And um, I wish you everybody a, a, a great week. We're just starting and I was excited as well uh, to have this kind of event. So wish you the best, Varun. Um, and I'm happy to be part of the, the first one. Right? Um, I am Enrique Lopez. I'm Mexican. I've been living in the Middle East for the past uh, eight years now. Um, I've been the professional uh, worker for the past over 25 years, I would say. Uh, out of which 24, um, 23, 24, I spent in the corporate world. And since a year and a half ago, I decided to go on, on my own, uh, working on projects um, and joining a couple of very interesting firms uh, here in the Middle East uh, regarding commercial topics, you know, anything related to developing business, developing um, strategies uh, for improving sales. And, and everything that has to do with Salesforce. And also uh, helping uh, one of the firms to, to land everything that is related to branding, you know, how to make it look uh, appealing for the final, you know, part of the value chain, which is the consumer and the shoppers. Um, so everything has been turning around that and, and very happy to be part of this event uh, because also uh, since some time ago, I started doing some, uh, advisory and coaching and mentoring as well to young entrepreneurs, uh, small companies. And, and that's pretty much, I would say, the topic that is um, related to uh, what we're going to talk about today. And, and thank you again for, for the opportunity and for being here. Um, with no further ado, let's, let's, let's start. Any comments, Varun? No, really looking forward, Enrique. All right. One of the chats I was really looking forward to, so. Okay, well, thank you again, everybody. And, and I want to start with a couple of questions, you know, to, to set up. And, and as you saw, um, here it, it's around making sure that we understand that we're trying to direct as much possible to the new way of doing business. This support that we're trying to do today it's making sure that there's an evolution, there is an improvement in the business in this part of the world or anywhere from you know where people is, is connecting from. And I want to start with two questions. It's like, the first one will be, have you thought on the critical elements to make a business, a startup, a company become either a failure or a success? And also, have you realized that on why most of the successful entrepreneurs and businessmen have failed miserably before really becoming the level of icon that some of them are today. Um, the other part is, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've been involved into advisory, into coaching and mentoring in the past, uh, you know, few years. And during this next hour, I want to share with you guys the experience, you know, my observations uh, and, and the value that I have gotten recently with and from my clients and also, you know, all these elements that have confirmed the painful process that I went through uh, on assigned projects along my, you know, my corporate years, like I mentioned, but also when trying to start up my own business, you know, as, as, as I am today on, on this fairly new entrepreneurial career. Um, so um, whether if you're a consolidated business person or if there's a need for, you know, knowing the basics uh, in terms of the elements for making a new endeavor successful, in, in all cases, you know, we have to be clear that and know that a big success usually comes directly linked to a big failure. And there's many examples about that. And you might say, well, Enrique, today in modern days, there's so much to learn from almost, you know, anything available on the web or from webinars, you know, that it's almost impossible to fail. I, I will say that even thought, you know, um, in these modern times, it's very easy to get lost in the sea of information. Before, probably we didn't have enough. Now we have too much information. And by having that, we could overlook the basics, you know, that, that are the ones that we must learn when it comes to setting up a business or starting a new project. And that's what the part that we want to talk about. And we always have to uh, have in mind that at the end, it doesn't matter if it's a very sophisticated business or if it's very basic business, we are all humans, right? And as humans, we are very interesting creatures. 
So we tend to usually know what to do from the beginning, but for some reason, we also tend to do it until somebody, somebody else reminds us to do it, or when we see it happening on somebody else, or sometimes we just don't do it, even when we know what to do. And that's when you know the things come around, and, and that's why the, the reason of making this session, um, let me share my screen, you know, about why today we consider that the failure is the new success. And first of all, let me tell you that answering to this question, there's no specific one or not the right one. At the end, it's a matter of knowing until you really try to do it and to find out for yourself. And getting into this failure success equation, I wanna start with a quote of one of the most successful dreamers, I would say, entrepreneurs, and best known for all the success that he has achieved, but not only about failures, uh, you know, all the failures that he got through, through, through um, doing his work, but also the great achievements that came afterwards. So this quote is about Mr. Richard Branson and everybody I'm pretty sure knows Mr. Richard Branson. And one of his saying is at the end, it's up to us understanding and learning by doing and by falling over. But I would complement this you know, quote by saying it's falling over and getting back up. So getting back up, it's something that we also have to learn to do every time we come across some difficulties. Because chances out there are that we're gonna fail. And I don't mean to be negative. It's just a matter of understanding that it's part of the learning process to become successful in whatever we are doing. So for example, you might say, what are my chances of you know, failure? Well, I will tell you everybody that our chances for failing are quite considerable. And I have a you know, few numbers that I have been able to collect and I will make, a, you know, I wanted you guys put here in the chat if you have an idea of you know, the new ventures, the new business, what's the percentage of, you know, uh, of this new, new initiative that failed in the first year? Okay, we start to see 75, anybody else? 60, 90. Uh, thank you for participating. F five, 50. All right. So I will tell you that in the first year, 90% of the new ventures have a high probability to fail. It doesn't mean that one out of you know nine only going to make it, but just I would say that 90% of them are in risk during the first year. So when it comes to you know moving on. If we say, okay, we passed the first year and we, I'm pretty sure last year, especially this number was for sure, uh, not, not a chance, but, but pretty close for what everybody had to go through uh, because of you know, the pandemic. But when it comes to surviving the first year, um, second year, there is a decrease on the chances of failing, but it's still pretty high. So meaning that seven out of every 10 business have a high probability of failing. And that's when we want to make sure that, again, going back to the basics, review those basics, because even when you survive the second year, you might say, well, third and fourth and, and so on. I can say that comes the number five. And the fifth year, based on you know, the studies we've been reviewing and the experience that we've seen, is that on the fifth year, um, still there is a high probability because 50% of the business could fail. Again, it's a matter of reviewing everything related to our business and having clarity on what we wanna do. Otherwise, we're gonna be on this you know, blue zone when we really wanna be on the white zone of this chart. And having said that, um, you know, we, when starting a new business, I came across to over 160 critical elements that need to be considered. And yes, some of them are related and can be, you know, uh, 
But at the end, this tells you the level of detail and attention that we need to put when embarking ourselves into a new endeavor. So yes, the failure is, it's, you know, is there, but it's up to us to make sure that this failure becomes a learning and that learning becomes a success at some point. And also, when you look at this, you know, if there's 160 chances you know, or elements to look at, assuming that most of them could be a failure, well, think about it positively. There's also 160 opportunities to learn from those failures. So any pot potential startup you know, can oftentimes get swept up into the excitement of the ideas, the products and services. And usually because of that, we as beginners tend to make devastating and yet common mistakes that we're gonna see that, you know, surprisingly, most of the entrepreneurs and leaders have let the futures in, in the hand of something very dangerous. So you might think people start a business and, and, and they are prepared or, or they are ready to do something. But when it comes the moment of truth to start this new adventure, guess what is the, the, the element in which everybody bases their future? And this one, let me tell you, thank you for the, for the answers that I started to see. This is luck. A lot of people, yes, believe it or not, people leave their faith into luck, saying, I hope everything goes well. So it's a matter of beliefs, I would say. And yes, I'm not talking about anything religious or anything. It's just a matter of, the, you know, when I say beliefs, I mean, I believe, you know, I was going to be right. I believe I wasn't going to be that difficult. I believe it had everything, you know, to be perfect. And I had everything under control. I believe I had enough resources. So out of those 160 elements to consider, I have clustered them into five robust groups, five robust groups, which are the ones that I wanna to talk to you about today to make sure that even if we fail, we consider them to make sure that those failures become a success. So let me start on that. And, and uh, without further ado, these five elements and you will be surprised because you will say, well, some of them are very basic. Yes, but for some reason, and, and, and to be honest, it doesn't matter if you're developing software, you're selling digital marketing, or you're promoting influencers, something that is very you know, um, trendy these days. If you're selling books, you're growing cattle or, or inventing new products, etc. I can tell you that according to my experience, if we synthesize all the potential failure points into the following five clusters, chances are that you will reduce the risk of failure and that you will be able to better learn from the hiccups that you might have to really convert the learning from those failures into your success. And we're, like I mentioned before, we're human, we're humans. And unless we see it happening to somebody else, perhaps we're not gonna do it. So this is the chance for, for us to start thinking about that. All right, so the first one, it's planning. And even when it sounds basic, believe me that it's something that we tend not to do or not to do properly. And we need to be clear that planning has to be related to the topics. Um, it's actually related to the topics or the main topics of why business fail. And planning has to be dynamic. It cannot be longer just a one-time deal, you know, when it happens or we're about to start the business. Because I will tell you that we also need to learn, and I'm gonna mention more detail on that, to, to pick up and to replan on the fly. And, and also we need to adjust, adjust to the dynamics of the industry and the economies in which we're gonna be um, working on. Because whatever we, you know, we are a plan must contribute to the goal of our business model, which is also part of our planning. And we need to remember that if we wanna make a business, has to be covering the three main elements. It has to be profitable, it has to be repeatable or sustainable, and it has to be scalable if we wanna make it work. So the main things that came across these 160 elements when it comes to planning, you know, the main points in which people fails or why people fails for not planning properly, it's around, let's say the concepts. 
I have run into some situations in, in which, you know, people has the money, has the, 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 the energy to do things, but they're not clear on the concepts. And by not having that, for sure, they're not clear on the goals. And it's a big issue, especially for, for you know, young entrepreneurs or people who is extremely excited about, about what they want to do, that we tend to confuse goals with wishes. They're two different things. You know, one is measurable, the other one is a desire, right? And that's when it comes to understanding that another opportunity for people to avoid failure is mapping. And with mapping meaning, I need to understand where am I located? Who is behind me in terms of the value chain? Who am I gonna be serving? Who am I gonna be focusing in terms of the, of the part of the market, you know, uh, that I'm going to capture? And another, once we have this clear, I need to plan my selling. I need to understand, you know, what I'm gonna tell them, what is gonna be the value that I'm gonna be bringing to them. And once I have it, I need to make sure that I'm gonna be able to showcase it, to showcase it. And that's why, you know, the marketing also becomes another element that during the planning can take us to failure. And I will, I will speak a little bit more on this marketing point because nowadays everything is digital or mostly digital. And, and I wanna make some observations. Another point that I have found, and, and recently I had a case um, with one of the, the, the groups that I was um, advocate, uh, you know, working on and, and coaching, is when it comes to capabilities. We need to have the minimum right capabilities to make our business work. The problem as well sometimes is that we do, want, we do not want to start unless we reach the level of having a Rolls Royce. So perhaps by the times, and actually that was the case of, of one of the, 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 the you know, uh, projects that I was involved with recently, these guys wanted to have a Rolls Royce, you know, to compare it to a car, instead of starting with a Volkswagen Beetle, with all the respect to the Beetle, and later on start shifting the capabilities to the level of having, you know, that Rolls Royce that they wanted. Of course, they took three times longer to start and they ran into issues of, you know, uh, expire inventory and they had issues in terms of you know the license for selling in certain areas etc so make sure that part of this planning needs understanding the the roadmap and also the capabilities needed for each one of the of the of the stages the other point before launching is the, the timeline and the deadlines so we need to be clear that we must have a timeline as a whole thing and a deadline, a deadline for collecting enough mapping, a deadline for getting the resources, a, get a deadline for launching. Otherwise, we're gonna miss that window that is very relevant to start generating our own resources. That is something that we're gonna talk uh, soon. And of course, there's always gonna be a D-Day. That's part of the deadline. You know, when I'm gonna make it live, when I'm gonna be connecting with people, when I'm gonna launch the app, when I'm gonna have it available in the market. And, and also as well, we need to consider, so what if it doesn't work? So planning, planning for failure, it's another element that actually has brought uh, new uh, ventures into failure for not planning for it, just for not having clarity, you know, where, where the, the floor is it's finished. Otherwise you're gonna go off the cliff. And then when it comes to post-launching, well, we tend also to just plan for, let's say, reaching the first stage or whatever it is. So we call it that, you know, the first lap. It's like running, right? We run in one lap. The problem is that we are not planning on what's gonna happen after I reach that first lap. So that comes also with the vision. We need to plan beyond the first lap. And with that comes the evolving. I need to be capable of evolving. A lot of the times people has been successful in the launching, but by not having the proper planning, uh, it comes to the leveling, they become obsolete because there was no evolution. There was no you know, adapting to the new landscape, which is the next point. So we need to have clarity on understanding what it's around me, how people is reacting, how in terms of the consumers, the competition, um, who would have thought last year you know, that e-commerce would have grown that fast. No, well, and I've seen, and I saw a lot of, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, business and, and some of them related to some of my friends that actually uh, I will speak as well in some of the examples, 
they had to either uh, change dramatically the role, whoever you know was able to adapt, or unfortunately closing, because the landscape changed and they were not able to catch up with that changes, with those changes. The other point is scaling. Okay, we reached the first lap, but when do we want to make it bigger? We need to have clarity. So either if it's after a certain time or a certain after a certain level of sales or after a certain level of competition intensity to put some of the few ones. So scaling, if we don't have it in our, our original planning, it can become another point of failure. And, and with that, it's linked to the point of, you know, having always the, the thinking, we tend to think on short term versus having, you know, in mind that anything we do requires a long-term commitment. And I'm gonna say it again, please need to balance and get away from the short-term thinking and put it more into a long-term commitment. Once we understand that, we need to build back backwards to, to see what is needed to make it. And last but not least on this you know, planning part, similar to the failure is, I need an exit plan. I need an exit plan because sometimes, depending on the business, um, okay, if I plan for the failure, but I didn't plan how to get out, I might run into a very, you know, painful legal problems because probably I'm going to be owing money or a lot of money to different people and perhaps even the government. And you know that in, in many of the countries that we are related to, owing money, especially to government, is not only, you know, uh, closing the, the business in that set, like in some of, you know, the countries uh, around the world. Here, it's going to jail or actually even the port being deported or something like that. So we, we have to have this clarity in terms of what it's gonna be my exit plan to make sure that you know, it's included in my, um, in my planning. All right. The second point is about finance. And finance, you might think, yes, of course I need money. But I will say, please don't get caught in the cash flow chaos. Everybody who has run a business or understands the basics of a business has have to consider um, voluntary or involuntarily, you know, the way of understanding cash. Cash is king in our business. So it doesn't matter if, if that money that I have, I owe it because at the end I can pay it back if I have sales. I have to have cash to generate cash. So don't forget that cash flow is king. And understanding the amount of money that we need to get our company going can lead to serious cash flow issues. And down the line, we need to have this clear. So for example, we can start with understanding you know, how much is people gonna pay for my product or my service, you know? And, and how much is people willing to invest on my product in case I, I'm, I'm requiring, you know, uh, funding from outside. Finance is king, but money is not everything. And in my case, I will say, now we'll talk about the, the, the funding. I've seen the startups that, you know, being good at raising capital, not necessarily warranties that they are good at growing the enterprise. And I say this again, being good at raising capital doesn't mean that you are good at building the company. So watch out on that. <clears throat> One of the main points about, you know, the, the, the failures that we can have when setting up uh, a company or a new pro project when it comes to the finance topics are having clarity on how much money and capital we need to start or to, to upsize it or, you know, or what is needed to make my, my business, you know, running. Uh, something very important as entrepreneurs, as, as new business owners, as developers, make sure that whatever we do, it's able to pay ourselves. Um, anybody has a question? Otherwise, I would appreciate you can put yourself in mute. Um, thank you. Um, and raising, you know, it, it's very relevant that we as new owners, we need to make enough cash to pay ourselves. 
And ourselves also means our team. So if there is a business that is not considering this, which by the way, happens a lot of the time because we just tend to say, oh, this amount of revenue is gonna be enough for me to pay the suppliers. Yes, but what am I gonna live you know, out of? I need to pay myself, I need to pay my team, I need to pay my, 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 my you know, people helping me on this. So paying yourself first becomes a priority when it comes to financial planning in the business. And actually it's one of the main things of why business fail. Because by having to pay yourself, you create a big hole into the cash flow, which is king of the bit for the business. And that's when things start going south. The other point is good money versus bad donations. And here we've seen that, you know, the money that we put in the business usually is much better when we generate it ourselves. So the meaning of raising capital or getting donations from family or friends, not necessarily has to, to do or has to be the best way. Of course we can do it and, and it's, and I will say whenever we need to ask for money outside, whatever we have for growing a business, usually it's the family, friends, some of them or with, with you know, uh, asterisks, and then we go to a, a financial institution. The other point in which, you know, why people has failed is because we do not keep the proper, you know, records. Sorry for the typo there. And we don't, we don't have a proper bookkeeping process. So accounting and understanding the cash flow again, it's part of the, you know, the critical elements to make sure that all the financial topics are there. The other part is when we start to expand or we need actually help because we cannot do it all, it's making hiring decision based on the cost. Watch out because you can pay that actually two or three or four times more by trying to hire somebody cheap instead of hiring somebody capable. The difference is that somebody cheap is gonna do whatever you ask. Somebody capable is gonna help you grow the business because for sure they have experience or they have the willing or they have the, 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 the attitude to do it. The other part will be margins and cash flow. And it's really related to the first two points. We need to understand what is the minimum margin that I need to pay everything, including myself, and understand how long this is gonna take for me to receive it back. And that happens a lot when we sell, especially you know, small entrepreneurs have big failures when selling a product to a big corporation that usually big corporations pay you in, I don't know, 30 days, 60 days. Actually, nowadays they're starting to pay in 120 days, which is, uh, you know, a long time. Four months is too much, right? Um, but that's how, how long they take to pay you back. So you need to have clarity on how you're going to manage the business until all that time until you receive the money back from whoever got your service or your product. So that's why margins and cash flow are very relevant. Um, and with that one is related to the timeline. So we need to understand by when I need to have what or how much. And that's, that's also related to the previous point. And again, you know, new business tend, tend to fail because they do not plan, they plan probably everything very well in terms of launching, in terms of the marketing plan, but they fail to plan when are we gonna get the money back? You know, it's good to sell, but it's better to collect the money for, for whatever I'm selling. And again, here has to come a planning for failure. So what happens if I sell, but I cannot collect the money? Or what happens if I have an inflation, which is not here probably, but in many of the countries that you know uh, we are related with, actually right now in some cases, they're starting to touch the level of hyperinflation. What's gonna happen with that? So I need to have an exit plan in case things go south. And, and I wanna take a break here. Just anybody has any question, please feel free to ask to, and, and we can move forward to the, to the next part. All right, let's continue. The third point or the third critical group, it's selling. And you might say, of course, if I don't sell, how can I do? Well, at the end, remember that sales, it's, it's service, right? 
So the minute we are selling, we're trying to cover a need that somebody has. We're trying to bring a solution. Well, believe it or not, the focus can be diverted somewhere else and we're trying to push products instead of really selling and anything related to this, to this selling question. So even if you, if you don't see um, your business as, as a traditional sales job, you're going to sell your concept con continually or constantly. And as a business leader, uh, you are sharing and selling your vision to your team, considering, let's say, if we're not physically selling something. For whoever is working on the corporate world, we are selling every day. So we need to sell these concepts these visions, these programs, because at the end, the team is going to help us or, you know, the interconnected team will do it. And that's where, you know, we also tend to fail if we do not go to the basics. And those elements, the, the ones that are most common on, you know, related to sales, and I will say here, sales and marketing, sales and marketing related points in which new business and new endeavors fail more of the time are related to the following points. And the first one is we are in, in the, this generation, especially is the generation of now. So we want results immediately. And that doesn't happen that way. So don't expect fast results for minimal effort. That's the other thing. Don't think that because you have the right platform and you're selling online, things are gonna happen immediately. So have that in mind. Selling, it's a matter of nurturing the shoppers, nurturing the consumer and making sure that they come back. Actually, that's the best part. You need to make sure that they come back because that's where, you know, we, we, we don't have that in mind. The first thing we need, we tend to do, which is the next point, we expect that the customers are going to spot us. Oh, just because I launched this new product, because I'm available on LinkedIn, because I have an Instagram page, because, you know, I'm an, in an industrial directory. We believe that the customers are going to see us and they're going to come to us. Sorry about that, but and then it takes me to the next point. We tend to, if we are, you know, having issues with finance, we usually the first thing we cut is marketing. A lot of the times, in difficult times, in difficult moments, marketing and efforts for selling are the ones that require more resources. Why? Because we need to keep a presence. We need to be available for customers. We need to be present in their minds. So poor marketing, it's another thing we have seen as an element for, for new startups or, or new uh, business to fail. We believe that just by paying, you know, uh, a little bit to, to Google in terms of ads or a small agency or just being out there will be enough. Well, guess what? Everybody has done the same, especially last year when everybody was locked down. So everything is around digital and digital now it's saturated with a bunch of information. So if our marketing is poor in terms of quality and quantity, for sure it could be another element for failure. In the other side, it's the over-marketing. Why the over-marketing? Because that can drain the resources that we have. That can affect, of course, the cash flow that we're mentioning. And also because the over-marketing um, at some point in certain industries can make an impression that our product is not worth what we're asking for. Meaning that we need to promote it a lot to make it visible because people doesn't like it. And that's again, another of the, of the you know, sadly another of the examples that I, I, I was able to see. Um, this, these guys that I was telling you about, you know, they were trying to go with the Rolls Royce instead of working first with the Volkswagen. First, they had a poor marketing. And after that, they had over marketing. So at some point, there were some comments and, and believe it or not, on their social media, they said, guys, I seen this everywhere. Is there something wrong with it? Or why do you have to sell it like this? Like, seems like, you know, I only hear it from you, but I don't hear it from the people around me. So watch out on that. Because that was that was a big eye opener, you know, and, and it's it's very simple coming from a real uh, a consumer. Now, um, when we try to to start new business, especially last year again, technology became a big thing, the the way to do business. But unfortunately, we still see a lot of people reluctant 
to 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 get into the, this technology um, and see technology as a tool, and 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 that's that's very complex in terms of you know what we what we can expect. Um, the other part is putting your product first and people last. Remember that I said in the beginning, it doesn't matter you know how developed we are at the end. We are people, and the ones buying our products and services are people, and the ones deciding what to buy. It's people. So if you put your product first, which means pushing it, instead of understanding what people really want, most probably we're gonna end up sitting on our product, you know, in the warehouses or in our service here in our mind or on our laptops. Because at the end, we need to make sure that we are meeting those, those uh, expectations, that we're able to bring a solution to the consumer. And that's when, you know, we need to understand what they want. Otherwise, we're going to be applying this, and for sure, it's going to be a failure. Uh, and on the other hand, on the other hand, when we when I spoke about uh, automation of, or technology, sorry, uh, it's very common that we run into a lot of offering today in automation, automating WhatsApp, automating your Facebook, you know, making an automation on 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 your social media, etc. That is fine. Actually, it's a great tool because if we do it properly, it's going to produce money while we're sleeping. The thing is that when we overdo it, and I will say that this is also related to the, the previous point, which is making sure that we are addressing a need, you know, what the, the consumer is looking for, consuming, considering that also from the first point, we are clear on what is the concept that we're selling. So when we don't have these two points clear, most probably whatever we do is going to be related to an over of whatever marketing automation or selling or promoting so yes technology is it's great but we cannot over rely on it and when it comes to that also the other point we've seen and and talking to some some guys that work in a, in a in a very solid uh, online grocery service um they said, you know, in the beginning, one of the main issues that they have to, and actually made them fail and, and re, reshape the business uh, in terms of the communication was believing that because they had a lot of traffic in the website, it was going to be the same level of income revenue or revenue generated. So traffic in the website doesn't mean that they're going to come and buy stuff from you. So again, if we don't have the proper platform, if we want to rely on on um, on on, in, on e-commerce, for example, um, it doesn't mean that whoever gets into our web page or into our app or you know through or or, or see us in Google means that it's gonna it's gonna buy from us. So that's when you know marketing is very relevant and understanding what the new uh, strategies and, and techniques for attracting attention, capturing, you know, uh, shoppers and make them loyal customers are out there and it's up to us, right? To, to make sure that we apply them correctly. Um, and on that one, I will say, we also tend to fail because we ignore the response from the customers. So yes, I was able to put everything nice, everything on the, on the nice website. People was able to, to easily in three clicks, get my product or my service, but then, they need to get back to me because something didn't work properly or because they probably want an upsize, which for us could be an upselling. And then we don't have a way to respond to them. There is no proper, you know, uh, attention to, to shoppers or, or even a suggestion box or inbox in these days. So we need to make sure that we are not ignoring the response of consumers and customers. And whether if it's on some direct communication or in understanding that they like our product and they will be buying more because then our efforts for selling need to change or be adjusted. Otherwise, we're gonna fail on that. And last but not, but not least on this part, uh, we need to have a complete and total understanding of the business. And this, I will say that everybody, everybody has to be clear and be able to explain your business, whatever it is, if it's corporate, actually, in that one, usually it's more complex. You know, on big companies, it's more complex, but we need to do it. And, and it's related to this elevator pitch that we have heard sometimes. We need to be able to explain our business, the benefit of it, 
or to universal the product or the business in one sentence. Make sure that it's no more than 60 seconds that it takes us to explain what we do in order to share with everybody, you know, what we're doing. Pretty much like making it easier for a kid to understand. And believe me, that's going to help us a lot because at the end, all the time, wherever we go, wherever, wherever we are at, we're going to be able to sell what we're doing and potentially capture more customers or at least make people to start talking about our products. Because remember, word of mouth is one of the most powerful things we can have and find and develop when it comes to trying to develop a business. Okay, the 401. And the 401 is about me. And you might say, well, I'm different. Exactly, that's exactly. Whenever you say it, I'm different, probably you're the first one who's gonna be related to this point. And we need to have clarity that we require a flexible brain. And please do a personal assessment, invest in yourself. One of the main points that I, I've seen lately and, and talking to other colleagues is that it took a while for people to really start investing on, on themselves. And actually, uh, and Baron will not, you know, uh, probably you will not think any different, but the best thing we can do now is take advantage of the many projects and many programs available online. Of course, you need to do your proper due diligence because there's some very good ones, but also some eh, that you're really not gonna get too much out of them. And, and what I'm saying about Barun is that Barun has, you know, like he has mentioned, he's developing different platforms. He has helped to make sure that people has the proper level to make sure that those business among themselves catapult to another one, to another better level. So investing on yourselves is the best thing you can do in this moment. And you, of course, need to assess yourself professionally, ideally. And you need to understand what is your risk profile because that also related to business and, and to decision taking. How flexible you are. Are you available or for all the time? Are you willing to work with people? Because we're gonna talk a, a little bit about that later. How open am I able to hear from other people while at the same time trying to lead them for understanding, you know, and making them part of my vision of my, 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 my belief, right? And how coachable are you? That's the other thing. Am I open to understanding, you know, what other people can tell me? Am I able to understand from the failures that somebody else had already? Or do I want to do it my own? So to be honest, um, a lot of this and a lot of the elements on this part, it's are related to ego. Yes, they are related to ego. And here is when we need to be true to ourselves. Because at the end of the day, becoming an entrepreneur is about purpose. It's about discovering why you're doing what you're doing. And it's about doing the needed legwork and putting in the time up front to ensure you have a stable and successful outcome in, in the long term. Remember, long term versus short term mind. And <clears throat> And here's when you, when you are open, it's when you're really gonna start learning from that failure, the many failures you may have. One of the main elements that lead to a failure when it comes to me, you know, as, as a leader of my business or as a leader of organization is thinking that, you know, the passion that I put um, in whatever I decide to do, you think of that, whatever your passion is, thinking that it's a business and it will work tomorrow. You need to be open to what's happening, you know, to the reality. The other point is, um, you, we need to evaluate. Remember I said in the, in, in the beginning of this me section, uh, you need to, to do a self-assessment. One of the main questions you need to ask yourself is that, do I really want to start this up right now? Am I you know, willing to put all the effort, the time, the resources, you know, for making this happen? You know, the other point is when we, it's good to have a plan. It's good to make sure on the details but it's not too good when we take too long to execute it. So this overthinking and trying to find the perfect, you know, scenarios to make sure that you have everything covered, which is the what if, what if this happened? What if this happened? What if this happened? It's terrible, it's terrible. If you think about it, 
binary, on a binary way, it tells you about two elements, the zero and the one. The zero is not happening. The first one, the, no, the one, I'm sorry, it's happening. So believe me, if 50% of your plan is properly covered as a whole, it's perfect to start. You don't need the Rolls Royce again to start. So kill the what ifs, kill the overthinking. Of course, make sure that the beginning is the planning and we already talked about it. It's properly, it's solid, right? The next will come along the way and that's how we're gonna learn. So don't be afraid to fail, which is the next point. Fear to failure, it's another element for failure. So we need to believe in ourselves. If we already passed the, the screening of, okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm ready. I'm not gonna overthink. Don't be afraid of failing. Actually, take the failures again, which is the topic of this whole conversation, as part of you know the way to move forward. And don't forget, please, if you are too much into your business, to take care of yourself. And actually, I raise my hand because lately I'm, I'm part of it, but I'm trying to keep myself into the boundaries uh, of you know take care of yourself. Like we said at the beginning, invest in yourself, take care of your health, eat at proper times. Decent food, right? We usually say, I'm going to eat something because I'm too busy. Well, give yourself a break. Take yourself, you know, uh, walking around. Do something because honestly, believe me, this increases. If we don't do it, increases the levels of stress. And, and unfortunately, these days, and, and uh, I spoke to, to actually one of the cardiologists that I know here, they said that there is more and more cases of heart-related issues on younger people. So watch out on that because we need to take care of ourselves. Otherwise, if we're not 100% or running at 100% level, our business is not gonna be able to, to make it. The other point is don't be too attached to everything. So don't love what you're doing, but don't love it too much. Otherwise you're gonna be blind and you're gonna not be able to hear everything in comments and see what's happening around it. And believe me, this happens, right? Again, going back to, to my friends, um, now my friends, uh, Case, they were so in love with what they were selling because it was a new, a new proposition in the area where they were selling. Yes, it was. But the problem is that they wanted to have the Rolls Royce. They, they were so much in love with, with, with their product that they missed opportunities. So they were expecting this wow moment all the time instead of start selling and then collecting the money and making sure to grow slowly instead of have everything perfect. And having that everything perfect for starting, that tells you about the level of how in love are you with your project, which honestly is good, but at the same time, too much is terrible. Okay, the other point is competition. We need to be aware of what's happening in competition. And I said, remember, this part is about ego, unfortunately. So make, don't make competition a personal deal. If the competition did something better, don't try to do something just to match them because perhaps that matching is gonna take you away from your strategy. Perhaps they are doing it because that's this, you know, the, whatever they did, it's, it's the essence of their business. And if you are too much in love with our business, we're not gonna be able to see it. And we're gonna just follow on them just, just for the heck of it, for saying I did it. So the me too is something that it's also killing a lot of business here. The other point and opposite to that is waiting for permission. You are the owner of your business. You are taking decisions on your own. So please do it. Learn on the fly. Don't wait for somebody to tell you, it's fine. I approve it. Of course, you're going to need it, but not on everything. Otherwise, you're going to go back to the same point of, you know, I'm close and I hate people criticizing. Anybody, any questions? Sorry. Otherwise, please put yourself on mute. Thank you. And don't worry, and please don't focus on social success. This thing about you know checking what's happening on Instagram because I want to do the same. It's similar to trying to to take the competition personal. Whatever you do, you're focusing too much on that part might take you away from your point, you know, from, from the target of your business. And of course, uh, we need to be positive and have a, 
a um, positive strategy, but it has to match our mindset. It doesn't matter how well structured is, is a, our a strategy if our mindset is totally off. So make sure that whatever we plan, we believe in. And it's what we're trying to do. Otherwise, there's not going to be connection between the mindset and, and the strategy, even if it's really good. And that can take us south as well. And last but not least, and it actually was the opening point of this, invest in yourself. A lot of people think, and it's similar to not you know, having the proper planning for once you make the loop, when you make the first lap. If we stop learning, we become less competitive. Because guess what? There's people who's been preparing and learning and investing in their business for the past three years before launching. So by the time they launch, they might be six months ahead of us in terms of developments. So that's why every time we do something, we need to take it as a learning. And it's the failure, the one that is going to push us to do it. But why not the success as well? Why not learning on what are the three things I did properly? And what are the many things that I wouldn't do again? And actually, that, that can be a, a topic for another you know, strategic approach on, on development in, in terms of, of you know, fact-based development. Um, because at the end, if we do, are not continuing evolving, means that our business is already determined or planned to fail. All right. Um, how am I doing in time, Barun? Or Kanika, if you can help me, please, because I see I, I have... we need to we, we need to end right now. Uh, I'm really sorry, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, there's another session that is about to start on this uh, link, right? All right. So we have to end right now. So but, just uh, just the last I... one, which is partnering, and I just want to show uh, things uh, very quick. So planning, it's yes the most relevant partnering, which is the one. Um, I can share with you later another session if you want, uh, or contact me if you have. And that making sure that we have the proper partners, the proper support, and asking for help if needed. The other one will be selling, finance, and about me. And I just want to close with this quote. It's fine to celebrate success, but it's more important to hit the lesson of failure. So please do it. Uh, thank you for the time. I'm Enrique Lopez. And I'm, you know, here are my contact uh, information in case you need any further information on, on, on the topics we have today. And thank you for the opportunity, Baron. Thank you so much, Enrique. That was excellent. I, I learned a lot. I hope everyone else did as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all of you in the next session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Take care.